The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. How about you coming over to my house? Well, I wish I could, Jack, but I've got to go back to the studio and make some spot announcements. Oh. Say, Dennis, would you like to come over to the house and play a little gin rummy with me? No. (laughs) Why not? You cheat. (laughs) I? I cheat? I've been watching you. When you play, you deal off the top of the deck. What? The man I played with on the train always dealt off the bottom. <laughs> For heaven's sake, kid, when will you learn? Here's your check, gentlemen. Oh, I'll take it. Good, good. <laughs> well, fellas, I'm going home. Mr. Benny, do you want me to drive you? No, thanks, kid. It's such a nice evening, I think I'll walk. So long, boys. So long, Jack. Jack. Gee, the weather's balmy. Spring is the nicest time of the year. Trees are green, flowers are in bloom. Makes a fella feel good. Toot, toot, tootsie, goodbye. Toot, toot, tootsie. Where does Jolson get off saying he doesn't go, yeah? Da, 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 dum, bum, bum, bum. Excuse me, mister. Huh? Could you spare a dime for a cup of coffee? A dime? Well, let's see. I haven't got a dime. The smallest I have is a half a dollar. I haven't eaten since yesterday. (laughs) Well, look. Look, buddy, here. Here, take the half a dollar. Gee, mister, thanks. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. (laughs) Dum, dum, let's see goodbye. Yum, bum, beam, bum, bum, bum. Gee, that was nice of me. <laughs> he only asked me for a dime, and I, I gave him a half a dollar. <laughs> I wonder if it's deductible. What's the difference? Toot, 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 say goodbye. Half, half dollar, goodbye. Da, dee, da, dum, bum, dee, dum. Da, 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 dum, dum, dee, um, bum, 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 Toot, toot. Hello, Mr. Benny. Well, Mr. Kitzel. Mr. Benny, who was your friend, too, who I just saw you talking to? My friend? Oh, oh, that was some poor man who wanted a dime for a cup of coffee, but I gave him a half a dollar. Bless you, <laughs> Thank you. By the way, Mr. Kitzel, where are you going? I'm on my way to the baseball game. Oh, yes, yes, there is a game tonight, the Angels in San Diego. I didn't know you were such a fan. Oh, my, yes. But I'll tell you one thing, Mr. Benny. The baseball players are not like they used to be. You're right. Some of those old-timers were really great. Oh, my, when I think of such players like Christy Matthewson, Ty Cobb, Rabbi Marinville. <laughs> No, 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 Mr. You mean Rabbit. Rabbit, Marinville. Rabbit? He might never heard of. Oh. <laughs> well, I don't want to be late, Mr. Bennett. See you again. Oh. Toot, 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 say goodbye. Toot, toot, toot. Yeah, Mr. Kitzel was a nice guy. But then I'm a nice guy, too. <laughs> yeah, fellow only asked me for a dime, and I, I gave him 50 cents. <laughs> Yeah, I wish Luella had been there to see it. <laughs> Maybe I'll call her when I get home. <laughs> well, 
here's my house. Wasn't such a long walk after all. Let's see now, which one is my door key? Here's the key to my car, the key to the garage. The key to my hope chest. If Mary doesn't ask me soon, I'm going to start wearing those things. <laughs> oh, oh, here's the key to the door. Boss, is that you? Oh, Rochester, I didn't know you were home. I'm in the kitchen. Roger, isn't this your day off? Yeah, but I thought I'd stay home and get caught up with these dishes. Well, look, you've let a whole week's dishes accumulate. Why do you let them pile up like that? It isn't my fault. It's that new soap you bought. We just can't get together. <laughs> what do you mean, you and the soap can't get together? When tide's in, I'm out. <laughs> oh. oh, say, Rochester, on the way home... Oh, excuse me, boss. I want to put these clean dishes away. <laughs> Rochester, you know, on my way home, some poor fella asked me for a dime. Uh huh. But I gave him 50 cents. <laughs> Roger, why'd you drop those dishes? All I said was I gave a man 50 cents. Rochester, you didn't have to push that second stack off the drain board. I didn't touch them. They jumped off by themselves. <laughs> what a mess. Boss, look at me. Huh? Did you really give a man 50 cents? I certainly did, Rochester. And, you know, if I, if I had known the, the, the wonderful feeling, the, the warm glow I'd get from being generous, I, I would have started earlier in life. Boss... Would you like to talk about my salary? <laughs> Manana. <laughs> the word I picked up in Palm Springs. <laughs> well, Rochester, I've had a long day, so I, I think I'll go to bed. Hmm? Okay. Good night, boss. Good night. Toot, 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 see goodbye. Toot, 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 see don't cry. Da -do -do boom, boom, boom. Da 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 da. -do. Yeah, I bet I'll really sleep tonight. Ah, this bed feels good. Feel good to get my shoes off, too. Mm. Mm. Mm, that's a funny-looking sock. Oh, for heaven's sake, I told Rochester a million times, don't put my gloves in that drawer. <laughs> No wonder my toes were cold. They were separated. <laughs> where, where are my pajamas? Oh, here they are. I don't ever remember being as tired. Oh, my goodness, I almost forgot. Dear Diary. <laughs> April 9th, 1950 cents. I mean, 19... <laughs> Today, I did a wonderful thing. A needy person asked me for a dime for a cup of coffee, and I gave him 50 cents. <laughs> Rochester, what happened in the kitchen? I don't know. I'm in bed. <laughs> Well, I better get to bed, too. I gotta get up early tomorrow morning and play golf with Mary. Oh, gee, I forgot to call Luella and tell her about giving that man 50 cents. <laughs> yeah, but then maybe that's too hammy. Uh, it was nice of me, though. I didn't even know the fellow, and I gave him 50 cents. 50 cents. He didn't have a gun or anything. <laughs> I just gave him 50 cents. The 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is your CBS Worldwide Correspondent bringing you the event you've all been waiting for. Today, dignitaries from the four corners of the earth have gathered at this banquet to pay homage to the most generous man in the world, Jack Benny. That's me. He's talking about me. They're giving me a banquet. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this great event is coming to you from the banquet room of the Taj Mahal. <laughs> the dais is replete with dignitaries. A hush falls over the audience as the master of ceremonies rises to his feet. He is none other than the Honorable Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill? At a banquet for me. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, it is with a deep feeling of pride that I have come here to preside on this wonderful occasion. Little did our guests of honor know that his exhibition of generosity, generosity would shake the very foundation of the world. I know that most of you were as shocked as I was when the news reached me. I was sitting on the front steps of number 10 Downing Street. As you all know, I'm not quite inside yet. <laughs> and now, as your master of ceremony, it is my pleasure to bring you the next speaker. A great cinema star from Hollywood, Mr. James Cagney. James Cagney? How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? It's a pleasure to be here. There are so many things going to be said tonight about Mr. Benny tossing four bits to a panhandler <laughs> that I, uh, well, that is, uh, well, I'm not the kind of a guy who makes flowery speeches. But I'd like to say one thing. Good health to all from the Taj Mahal. Bill <laughs> must be paying him, too. <laughs> and now for our next speaker... Another celebrity who not only regards Mr. Benny as his best friend, but has for many years had the good fortune of being Jackson's next-door neighbor. He called me Jackson. Winnie called me Jackson. And here he is, our next speaker, Mr. Ronald Coleman. Ah, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. If I were king, I couldn't possibly wish for a better neighbor. If I were king. <laughs> yes, if I were king, I would bestow upon our guest of honor the title of knighthood. If I were king. If I were king, I'd see that every man in my kingdom had five acres of land, a ten-room house, and a glass with lipstick on it. <laughs> Now, before I conclude, I would like to assure Mr. Churchill that the 50 cents that Mr. Benny gave away came out of his own pocket and will not be deducted from the Marshall Plan. Of course not. Thank you, Ronnie. That's quite, That's quite all right, Winnie. Ladies and gentlemen, while Mr. Churchill is introducing the next speaker, I want to take this opportunity of passing through this vast audience and pointing out some of the other celebrities who are here today. At the far end of this table, I see Princess Elizabeth. Seated next to her is Madame Chiang Kai-shek. Looking down the table, we see Queen Juliana of the Netherlands. And seated next to the Queen, we have a lovely lady dressed in ermine cape, star sapphire tiara, and a diamond bracelet. I beg your pardon, miss, but I've taken the liberty of describing your jewels, so now may I ask, who are you? I'm the girl who works in the drugstore. <laughs> oh. Well, who is this sitting beside you? Don Wilson. He hasn't finished eating yet. <laughs> so now, once again, we take you to the dais and Winston Churchill. And now, ladies and gentlemen, another great man and speaker... Mr. Cary Grant. Good evening. Cary Grant is here, too. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very happy to be here tonight at the Taj Mahal honoring this great man. <laughs> I'd like to say only this, 
Mr. Benny may have had the experience of being Charlie's aunt, but I was a male war guard. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Grant. And now we come to one of the highlights of the evening. A man to whom Mr. Benny gave the 50 cents. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. John L. C. Ferroni. That's the guy. That's the guy I gave the money to. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to have this chance to talk to you because, uh, well, I have a confession to make. When Mr. Benny gave me the 50 cents, I didn't want to buy nothing to eat. I just wanted to take the 50 cents and uh, buy a sweepstake ticket. <laughs> Well, I did. And that night I went home and I was just hanging around the house. I wasn't doing anything. Just hanging around the house. Uh, I didn't feel like doing anything. So uh, I was hanging around the house and... Uh, uh, <laughs> Listening to the radio, radio. All of a sudden, the radio started talking to me, and I had the radio for three years. I never said anything to the radio. The radio never said anything to me. I didn't speak to any furniture in my house at all. The radio says, did you know that you had a winner of $150,000? I said, who? You. Me? Yeah. I said, you know what my number is? He said, your number is 204759030307-M6990707. Seven seven three. John now sees the warning. I said, "Holy smoke, that's me!" That's what I won. And $150,000 is mine. I gave you the 50 cents. I paid for that ticket. It's mine. It's mine. I paid for it. I paid for it. Do you hear? It's mine. I paid for it. Bob, Bob. It's mine. It's mine. I paid for it. Bob, wake up. I paid Huh? Huh? Boss, you've been yelling in your sleep. Oh. Oh, yes, I was dreaming. What were you dreaming, boss? About giving that man 50 cents. and say, there go the rest of the dick. <laughs> we'll be back in just a moment, but first... Listen to your woman, but not closely. <laughs> 